Hello and welcome to Rachel Rogers TV. I'm Rachel Rogers and today is going to be a very interesting episode for you if you are engaged in disruptive behaviors. Now, what the hell is disruptive behavior, you may ask? I am happy to answer that question. Disruptive behavior is when a company is engaged in innovating like a mofo and doing things very differently than the other companies in their industry. So if you are shaking things up in your industry and doing things like they've never been done before, then first, congratulations. Okay, good job on killing it. Secondly, you are engaged in disruptive behavior. Now, disruptive behavior isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's actually usually excellent for business and your customers probably love you. However, being disruptive also means that you are more at risk for legal issues. Now, why is that? It's because the law takes a really, really long time to catch up what us innovators are doing, which means that you have to work harder than your competitors to make sure your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed in your company. So let me tell you a little story that will illustrate this point. Recently, I got a letter from the IRS informing me that they needed more information to back up the revenue that I reported on my 2014 taxes. So after reviewing the letter, I did what I always do after I receive a letter from the IRS. I sent it to my accountant because that's what I pay him for, am I right? So after following up with the IRS, my accountant informed me that the IRS thought that I was hiding money. Why did they think I was hiding money? Because I was engaged in disruptive behavior. So let me explain. For most law firms, credit card sales account for 47% of their overall revenue. For my law firm, credit card sales account for 80% of our overall revenue. That's because we offer flat fees only. We also offer a client portal where clients can pay these flat fees upfront um, through the internet. And so most of them use this method and use credit cards to do it. So just that one way in which we're shaking things up in our industry led to a tax audit for us. Now, it was a correspondence tax audit, which is sort of the least scary kind of audit that can happen. And so, you know, I do have all the information to back up what I reported to the IRS. So it's a pain in the ass, but overall, it's not super scary. The key thing to know there is that, like I said, I have the paperwork to back up what I reported, okay? Record keeping saves asses. Say it with me now, record keeping saves asses. Now, tax audits aren't the only concern when you're an innovative company engaging in disruptive behavior. Other areas include if you're in a highly regulated profession, such as a doctor, nutritionist, a psychologist, an accountant. If you're in one of those professions, then you know you likely have a lot of regulations that you have to comply with that may not account for some of the innovative ways that you're delivering your services. Another example would be if you are doing things differently than other people in your profession. For example, if you're a photographer, then you might have to take additional steps to protect your intellectual property because you're not doing things in the standard way and what your clients and customers are accustomed to. Another example would be obtaining insurance for some of the crazy stuff you wanna do. Sometimes it can be very difficult to explain to an insurance company how you're delivering your services if it's really different from others in your industry. When there isn't a tried and true path to what you're trying to accomplish in your business, it can be hard to gauge where booby traps might await. So how can you be sure to cover your disruptive ass? <laughs> well, I've got a couple of tips for you. Number one, always keep good records. Remember what I said, record keeping saves asses. Be sure that you are keeping records of all of your tax documents, any corporate documents, definitely your contracts. Make sure that you've got all of your legal documents and fin financial documents in order always. Two, make sure you have a proper and formal business entity. I'm talking LLC, S Corp. Make sure you're in the right entity because that's going to come in handy if a legal issue does arise. It's protecting you and your personal assets from the business risk that you're taking. Number three, have a contract for everyone with whom you do business so, and make sure that you're not using just substandard contract templates. You have to customize your contracts to fit the innovative things that you are doing. Number four, make sure you're taking steps to register and protect your intellectual property so that when you're engaged in contracts or other transactions, you're not putting your IP at risk. And lastly, number five, make sure that you are complying with industry regulations. For example, if you're doing business online, make sure you're complying with Federal Trade Commission regulations. 
If you are paying attention to these five areas of your business, you are less likely to run into some nasty surprises. Now, of course, ideally, you would work with an attorney to help you cover your assets and make sure your disruptive behavior doesn't lead to major disruption of your business. So that's all I have for you today, folks. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends. And if you never want to miss an episode of Rachel Rogers TV, use the info boxes below to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. About to launch a business or product? About to also launch an anxiety attack because you're overwhelmed by that very real and present danger? Finding the perfect name. Well, we've got you covered in the legal and creative sense because one without the other is just plain silly. Meet Ready Name Fire, a how-to guide for creating a business name worth talking and buying about. Go to smallbusinessbodyguard.com name to get our new free cheat sheet, The Anatomy of an Excellent Name, and also be the first to find out when Ready Name Fire launches.